Welcome to KM Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday, a staff member or volunteer shares an object from our permanent collection to invite discussion. Please check back at 10 a.m. every day for a new work and a new conversation. Hello, I am Peter Bell, curator of European painting, sculpture, and drawings at the Cincinnati Art Museum. One of our greatest European paintings came to the museum 93 years ago, a gift of Mary Emery. It is this three quarter length depiction of an older man in gleaming armor. A swag of dark drapery sets off his face. A column behind him invokes the authority of classical architecture to reinforce the sense of strength and steadfastness. And the baton in his right hand is a symbol of military command. His left hand rests on his sword. Our commander is Agostino Spinola, Count of Tassarolo, a high-ranking citizen of Genoa in the decades around 1600. Genoa has been a great port and seafaring city for over a millennium, rivaling Venice in the Renaissance with its fleet of warships and merchant marines. Famously, Christopher Columbus was Genoese, and today it is the Mediterranean's busiest port. In the Renaissance, it also became a banking center and was famous for its silk industry, especially black silks, which makes me think of the dark swag of velvet here at the upper left of the portrait. More than 10 mem members of this man man's family, the Spinola, were doges or rulers of Genoa. Anthony van Dyck painted this portrait in the 1620s. Born in Antwerp, van Dyck worked in England and Italy and was one of the 17th century's virtuoso artists, an artist synonymous with portraiture. His dashing, vivid evocations of his sitters, often on a monumental uh, full-length scale, mark uh, one of the highest points in the European tradition of portraiture. Like his exact contemporary, Diego Velázquez, the way that Van Dyck represented individuals has exerted a strong influence on artists and patrons ever since. In relatively recent times, we can think of Francis Bacon responding to Velázquez or Kehinde Wiley responding to Van Dyck. Until very recently, we didn't know the exact identity of the man in our picture. The scholar Ana Orlando has demonstrated, based on comparisons with portraits on coins and archival documents, that uh, he is Agostino Spinola, who died in 1617, several years before Van Dyck made his first trip to Italy, and thus that the artist painted this likeness posthumously. It was most likely Agostino's brother or his nephew who commissioned the painting from the famous Flemish portraitist, newly arrived in Genoa, to honor this revered late relative. This portrait does a number of things. It represents an iconic uh, image of military honor and civic standing. It memorializes a late family member. But for me, what is most powerful uh, what is that it creates this, this human presence uh, at once imposing and with the contrasting turns of head and body uh, dynamic and alive that Van Dyck did not and in fact could not paint this portrait from life makes me marvel at the power of the painter's art uh, paintings beautiful convincing fiction the power of art to memorialize vivify captivate deceive I would be glad to know your thoughts on Van Dyck's accomplishment with this painting or on other portraits that have stopped you in your tracks, or on the power of portraiture writ large.